Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll have to rush, I think, because we've already used up some time. Uh, a common question that I've gotten over the last 20 years since I've been looking at the economics of different various systems is which one is best. Well, there will never be a study that will show that one system is better than any other one for all under all conditions for all times. But we now have quite a bit of data to help people decide which one might be best for them. And we're only going to look at a little bit of the data today because time constrains us to, um, to only looking at a small part. Um, the Wisconsin data spans 19 years for uh, conventional and, and grazing, over 10,000 farm years of data for conventional, 350 farm years of grazing data, and 15 years and 162 farm years of uh, organic data. And then we've got the six years of Great Lakes Grazing Network data that included all the states that touch a Great Lake plus the province of Ontario. Well, and additions of farmers' ages, or what, how do you get those years? It's the number of farms each year times the num or over the number of years. That's in our data set. One year per farm. Well, we've got some farms that have been in there for 19 years, and then some have only been in for one and everything in between. And then, uh, of course, I've looked very carefully at data collected from all of these sources, some of whom were in that Great Lakes Grazing Network and some who were not. And of course, I'm looking at not only organic data, but grazing and conventional data where, where these sources have that kind of data. In some cases, the data is very limited. Virginia Tech's data is very limited. Maryland's very limited, et cetera. But it gives us a glimpse of what economics looks like in the, that part of the country. Um, <clears throat> as, a, as kind of a preview summary statement, the profit focus of the dairy, different dairy systems is different. The confinement herds focus on high production in seek of profitability. Grazers focus more on decreasing costs in their quest for profitability. And the organic focuses on product differentiation to get a higher milk price to gain their uh, margin of profitability. Uh, that's a generalization. And of course, any uh, the top performers in any of these groups do a better job of maximizing the optimization or optimizing those factors of profitability. But uh, just, a, just an idea of the characteristics of the data. Um, all of the organic data are from farms that they're fully certified and they were receiving the uh, organic milk price for the entire year for the years that are included in the summaries. And in the Wisconsin data, this is a group of highly experienced farmers. Not only were they certified for quite some time before they were in the study, but they were farming even longer than that. Um, I think it was uh, there was a comment last night about uh, the grazing standards for organic being more strict in Europe than in this country, and um, and even in Wisconsin, um, in the data sets that I have for Wisconsin. In every year, there have been a few of the farms that weren't really that, of organic farms that weren't that enthused about grazing. And uh, I actually have sliced and diced the data so that I can look at or organic farms that graze, and organic farms that don't, etc. but we're not going to look at those distinctions today. Okay, today's data we're going to focus on um, organic grazing and an average of all the Wisconsin confinement, confinement uh, herds. We actually break down the confinement data in Wisconsin into the six different herd sizes that USDA uses, but we're going to look at the average of it today. I do have slides that show all the other comparisons, but we're not going to cover that today. So the, um, the um, confinement herds have been growing in size over that period of time. The other two systems have grown a little bit in size, but not nearly to the extent. And this next slide, if you just look at the bottom line, the average line, um, which you can't see, unfortunately. <laughs> About 65 uh, her, uh, cows per herd over that 15 year period for the grazers and organic, and 154 for the confinement farms. And if you could see the bottom of this slide, you'd see that it's growing a little bit for the grazing and organic, but not as much as for the confinement. Pounds of milk sold per cow. Uh, the scale in this slide doesn't do justice to the steepness of the uh, of the production increase for the confinement herds. Uh, almost every year, they produce they sell more pounds of milk per cow than the year before, 
um, the grazers are on a very slight upward trend and the organic is on a very slight downward trend. One of the things that's puzzling me is that when you look at the organic uh, plant production, and there's a Karen Dellett in the back of the room, and her data shows that there's very little difference in, in yields that she's getting from organic versus uh, conventional. But uh, certainly we see a big difference between organic and conventional uh, in, on the dairy side. And I'm not sure why there's that why <laughs> on the crop side they don't give up as much yield as we seem to on the dairy. I've got some ideas on that. In recent years, the price of organic grain has really discouraged organic producers from feeding grain, and almost everybody agrees that if you feed, if you have dairy rations with no grain, you're going to give up some production compared to feeding some grain. That's part of it. I don't think that explains all of it. Um, and uh, the average production uh, over the over the 15 years, about 14,000 pounds for organic, uh, about uh, almost 16,000 for uh, grazing, and uh, almost 22,000 for the conventional. And as I look at the other states, if I look at the organic data from California, Minnesota, New York, North Carolina, Ohio, I see production levels for organic that's about that 14,000. Oh, in Vermont, 14,000 pounds or less. About 11 to 14,000 is where I'm seeing the pounds of milk sold per cow. And in grazers, it's around the 15, 16, 17. And of course, confinement in most places is over 20. Okay, milk price per 100 weight sold. Uh, the organic, um, clearly higher than any of the other systems every year. It's on sort of a steady upward trend. And uh, what's interesting, uh, the other interesting feature here is how close the grazer and conventional price has been per hundred weight sold uh, across these years. A lot more volatility for those two groups, but they they seem to track each other pretty well. And again, if we, <laughs> if you can see the bottom line, the the average for the 15 years for uh, organic was 23.54 versus 1669 for the grazers and 1608. So there's about a 50 cent hundred weight difference between confinement and grazers, but uh, about a $7 per hundred weight difference between the organic and the grazers. So that's the price premium that the organic producers have been able to receive over time. If we look at about the first half of this period, that price premium averaged out to be about $4.60 a hundred weight. And in the last half of the period, it's about $8.80 per hundred weight. It's been increasing over time. Uh, we look at a lot of different measures when we look at financial um, uh, performance. We're going to focus most, mainly on net farm income per hundred weight sold today, because we don't have time to look at all of the others. But I do want to quickly identify what I mean by allocated costs. It's a term that we use in Wisconsin, not used very many other places. If this whole box is what an economist calls total cost. And then if you eliminate that top box, which is the opportunity cost of unpaid labor management and unpaid equity, the costs that you have left are called allocated costs in our Wisconsin system. And most non-economists will call alloc what we call allocated cost total cost, but uh, just so you know what that term means as we go through, because the next slide we're going to look at is the allocated cost uh, between the three systems. The organic system is clearly the high cost system in terms of allocated costs. Of course, we're not taking into account any externalities, what economists call externalities, the hidden societal costs is a more layman's term of describing what that is, et cetera. But, um, but clearly when we're looking at the costs that we typically associate with producing uh, milk um, every year, high cost producer, and that pattern I see in every place that I look at it in the United States, and uh, I'm sure it applies in Canada as well. Okay, uh, next highest then is the confinement group and the grazers are on the bottom where they prefer to be in this particular measure. I mean, because that's what they're trying to shoot for. Um, 
over this period of time, the average for the uh, organic is 22, almost 22 and a half versus about 15 and a half for the grazers versus um, about 17 and a half for confinement over that period of time. So, um, so if your allocated cost is $7 a hundred weight higher than the alternative, then you need at least a $7 per hundred weight premium to be equal economically to the other system if you've got the same, if you're selling the same amount of milk in the same period of time. Okay. Five minutes. Um, the estimated feed cost for the organic uh, is also highest and next in line then is confinement and then grazers. And let's see, I think, uh, I'll just quickly point out that you see that the organic, the, the, the feed cost has more than doubled for organic over that period of time and not quite doubled for the other two groups. And these are some cost categories that are almost always higher for the organic herds versus the others. Okay, net farm income from operations uh, per underweight sold. Um, over most of the years, the organic herds in Wisconsin had at least slightly higher net farm income from operations per underweight sold, but the grazers give them a good run for the money even without that price premium because the grazers are more effective at controlling their costs uh, the way we measure the costs and then the confinement is has always been on the bottom in the comparison of these three groups. Um, and the other thing that's important here is that you see more volatility this second half of the period and you <coughs> see the gap widening a little bit or this last half was was better economically for organic because mainly because they've been successful in getting a higher price premium. And let's see, we've got to go fairly quick here. Okay, this is total net farm income from operations uh, uh, per unit or per farm. Um, and um, here because the Confinement farms on the average are two and a half times larger than the grazers or the um, organic farms. Uh, they end up having a total net farm income from operations higher than the other two groups in several of the years. And, um, but on a per cow basis, on a per hundred weight sold basis, their margins are smaller. And uh, you see in 2009. That was a terrible year for confinement. The grazers and the organic folks did pretty well, did reasonably well in 2009. The worst uh, year in dairy in the century. Um, that gives you an idea of the size of the net farm income from operations. On the average it was about 57,000 for the organic, about uh, almost 50,000 for grazers and uh, 77,000 for confinement, but the confinement, of course, have many more cows. Uh, Ten points very quickly to summarize. Um, the relative performance of dairy systems in Wisconsin, I believe, does apply pretty well to other states in the country. However, do not compare organic from one state to confinement to another state to grazers in another state because you will you will find that the relative profitability between states can be quite different. Um, in my opinion, the organic system is a harder system to manage because organic producers are voluntarily giving up management tools that non-organic producers have. Um, and that's in part from internalizing some of these external costs uh, uh, by way of the rules. Okay. By many measures, especially 100 weight sold, organic has been the highest cost producer if you don't take into account these externalities. And, uh, and then the largest confinement, our next highest, and it's almost linear. As you get smaller, the cost goes down, the cost per unit goes down. And of course, grazers generally are the lowest cost producers in the data if you look across various states, certainly true in Wisconsin. Um, 
Still organic competes with grazers for the highest net farm income from operations per unit of production, whether it's per cow, per hundred weight sold, etc. And uh, then the kind of the reverse order of what of the cost ranking that I uh, mentioned to you. Organic premiums range from two dollars and seventy cents a hundred weight to thirteen oh two. And I think I already mentioned what happened in the halves of the years. In my opinion, the grazing system helps the profitability of the organic system more than the other way around. Um, the organic system is higher cost. It's what the organic brings economically is a higher price. There's large consistent differences in net farm income from operations per dollar of revenue. Got a poster downstairs that shows this ranking around the country, but don't have time to show that here. Um, but there are large inconsistent differences. Uh, contrary to economic theory, I think total net farm income from operations influences farm size more than other factors. Don't have time to say that in this presentation, but you can ask me a question about that later on. Um, and uh, family size farms, uh, which I say are the size that can be operated mainly by family labor, um, are fairly similar across states in terms of the total net farm income from operations that they generate over time but the size of those farms are different. The one family size farms in Michigan are about twice as big as they are in Wisconsin in terms of the number of cows, for example. And then um, actual farm financial data indicates that economies of scale, in other words, lower cost of production per unit, occurs at a much smaller size in dairy than most people believe, something around 100 cows or less, which means that we don't necessarily have to get bigger to be more economically efficient. So. All right, thank you. That's an overview.